In this video, you will learn about failures in microservices communication and how to deal with them using timeouts, the exponential backoff technique, and the circuit breaker pattern. Even after placing our best efforts to ensure we have a healthy system, it is a matter of fact that in distributed systems, partial failures will happen. This could be due to multiple reasons, including network outages, hardware failures, dependency failures, and even routine things like having a deployment in progress. Regardless of the cause of the partial failure, when calling a dependent service, it could certainly cause our microservice to fail, which will end up in a bad experience for our clients. So, whenever a service makes a synchronous request to another service, there is an ever-present risk of partial failures, and so you must assign your service to be resilient to them. One of the first things to consider when making requests to a dependent service is setting appropriate timeouts. A service client should be designed not to block indefinitely and use timeouts. Think about the experience of our client when the catalog service takes a long time to come back to our inventory service, if it ever comes back. Now, the inventory service is also taking forever to respond to the client, leaving our users with a bad experience. And not only that, at least one of the threads of inventory is now busy not being able to serve any other requests, which reduces the amount of available resources in the service. Instead of this, you can set a timeout of, say, no more than one second, so that if catalog service takes more than that to respond, the request immediately fails, and the inventory service can in turn return the appropriate request to the client, even if it's a failure. This enables a more responsive experience and also ensures that resources are never tied up indefinitely. It is not uncommon for transient failures to occur in a distributed environment. Therefore, you usually want to give the dependent service one more chance to come back with a successful reply. However, you don't want to keep retrying at a constant rate, since that could overwhelm the dependency. A good strategy that you can use for retries is the one called retries with exponential backoff. This strategy performs call retries a certain amount of times with a longer wait between each retry. And here's how it works. As usual, the client will make a request to our service, and this one in turn will make a request to its dependent service. If this second request fails, instead of failing right away, our service will wait some time, and then it will try again. If the request fails again, we will now wait a longer amount of time before trying the request. If it keeps failing, we will wait a yet longer amount of time before one more try. And eventually, if we have tried enough times, with no successful response, we will let the call fail. As you see, this strategy lets the failing dependency have an increasing amount of time to recover. It also avoids overwhelming the dependency. Having a retry policy in place is good, but you also must be mindful about the limited resources available to your service. Imagine once again a situation where there is an ongoing issue with your service dependency. This might not be just a transient issue, but instead some prolonged downtime caused perhaps by a broad network outage. Now the client calls our service, and this one in turn invokes the already failing dependency which will hopelessly start waiting for a reply. While this is happening, more clients keep sending requests to our service, and this results in more requests being sent to the failing service. One thing you have to realize is that each of these requests are making use of your service threads, of which there is only a limited amount. Once enough threads are in use, there are no more resources available, and you can reach what we call resource exhaustion, when this happens, your entire service becomes unavailable for any future requests, potentially causing a lot of trouble in the system. One approach we can use to properly handle this issue is implementing the circuit breaker pattern. A circuit breaker prevents a service from performing an operation that's likely to fail. Here's how it works. Once again, we are in a situation where our dependent service is already in a bad state unable to provide successful replies. Our client then makes a request to our service. However, this time, instead of invoking the failing dependency directly, 
there is an intermediary that we will call the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker will now start monitoring the results of each of the requests that go through it to the external dependency. And when it detects that the rate of failure goes beyond the configured threshold, it will immediately stop letting any more requests go out and will fail them right away. This is what we call opening the circuit. After this, requests will just keep failing immediately during the configured wait time, which would hopefully give the dependent service enough time to go back to a healthy state. Eventually, the circuit breaker will let some requests go out to verify if they succeed. And if that is the case, it will close the circuit again, letting all further requests reach the dependent service. That's how the circuit breaker prevents our service from reaching resource exhaustion, while at the same time avoids overwhelming dependent services until they get a chance to recover. This video is part of my full course where I explain in detail how to implement all these techniques and patterns in .NET microservices. If you'd like to know more, please check out the links below this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time!